In this lesson, we'll be discussing differentiation and the derivative, two notions that came from two different places. One was the mathematician Leibniz and the other the physicist Isaac Newton. There was of course some debate over who of them was first, but at least from all this debate we now have the derivative. Leibniz's approach to the derivative was that he wanted to get a gradient for the tangent to any curve, and for that we'll need a graph. For the graph we need a function f of x which equals y, and the graph of this function will be a curve. Now Leibniz decided that he wants to be able to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve in any point given of coordinate x0, which is here on the graph. To x0 would correspond f of x0, a y0. But the tangent to the graph is a line, and in order to draw a line, or find the equation of the line, when you only know one of the points on the line, you would need another point. So we add the variable x. To x corresponds f of x, which is y. And with x and x0, we can draw up the line. A nice straight line that passes through these two points. The gradient for this line we know from straight line graphs that it is equal to y minus y0 over x minus x0, which we could also write as f of x, because f of x is y minus f of x0 over x minus x0. But there is a problem with this line. This line is not a tangent to the curve, as we can plainly see. By the construction itself, the line passes through the graph in the points m0 and m of coordinates x0, y0, x and y. So it is not a tangent, it is a chord to the curve. We need a tangent. So then Leibniz asks himself, what if x was actually closer to x0? Then the point would be here on the graph and the line would be this new green line that we have. Does this solve the problem? Of course it doesn't because still we have two points of intersection with the graph. But what if x was even closer to x0? What if x was here? Then the chord would still be a chord and not a tangent because there's still two distinct points in which it intersects our graph. The only way it could be a tangent is if x was infinitely close to x0. If x was actually equal to x0. But this cannot happen when working with real number because it would lead us to a division by 0. But we can say that if x was infinitely close to x0, and we say x tends towards x0, then the gradient of the tangent would be infinitely close to the gradient of the chord. We write this formally using limits, and we say limit when x tends towards x0 of the gradient f of x minus f of x0 over x minus x0 is equal to the gradient of the tangent to the curve in the point at which x equals x0. And we call this f dash x0 which is called the derivative of the function f. in x equals x0. And the process of which we, with which we find the derivative we will call differentiation. So for the chord to end up being a tangent to the graph 
we need for the two points m0 and m to be actually one point. So we need x to be inf infinitely close to x0, which we write using limits. And we can also express this differently. If we take x minus x0, the value of this to be h, then we could say that x is equal to x0 plus h. What we want is for x0 and x to be infinitely close to each other. So we will want this difference h to be as close as possible to 0, infinitely close to 0. So then the same formula that we have here for the derivative we can write differently. Limit when h tends to 0 of f of instead of x we'll use x0 plus h minus f of x0 over and x minus x0 will be h. This is also equal to the derivative of the function where x equals x0. These two formulas then they mean the same thing. Now all this is very nice and all but it's quite abstract. So let's see how it works. We've taken the case of the function f of x equals x squared plus 1. And we want to find the gradient of the tangent, so the gradient of the tangent where x equals 1. So then our x0 will be equal to 1. We go by the definition. The ratio will be f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 over h. And we'll remember at the end that h needs to tend to 0. f of x0 plus h means f of 1 plus h because x0 is 1 minus f of 1 over h. This is equal to, we replace in the formula x squared plus 1 x with 1 plus h, so we have 1 plus h squared plus 1, this is f of 1 plus h, minus f of 1, which is 1 squared plus 1, 2, over h. This will be equal to 1 plus h to the power of 2 will be 1 plus 2h plus h squared plus 1 minus 2 over h. 1 plus 1 is 2 minus 2 is 0. So this gives us 2h plus h squared over h. We can simplify here by h which gives us 2 plus h. Now we remember that h tends to 0. So when h tends to 0, this is equal to 2. What we got is the derivative of our function when x equals 1. This is actually the gradient of the tangent to the curve. Let's also visualize this. The graph of, of the function f of x is a parabola. The point where x equals 1 on the graph is here and the tangent to the curve in the point where x equals 1 will have the gradient 2. This is how we find the gradient to the tangent to a curve. The process is called differentiation and the function that we get is called the derivative. Of course, we could get even more out of this. We could have the actual equation of the tangent to the curve. But for this, 
you will need to see the next lesson.